new car, new season, Team BMW. Amazing, mate. How was it for you? I loved every second, you know. I've only been in touring cars before 2019 for a year, and uh, it's a big step up, you know. I don't think any driver really coming into it anticipates the, the step up, you know. The cars aren't quite as fast as what I had been used to, but everything else is just, it's just bigger, better, competition's harder. Moving to WSR was always an aim, you know. It's been an ambition of mine to race for Dick Bennett's and put my name alongside the likes of Senna and Hakkinen and Barrichello and obviously Turkington and, and Jordan. And um, when I signed for them, I was over the moon and I believed I was signing to go and race for one series um, until they got me in a room and made me sign a, a load of NDAs. And, um, and then they told us, showed us some photos and I just instantly, you know, I was like, sign up to anything at that point. You know, I had to be in that car. It, it just ticks every box, you know, it's, it's the perfect touring car. Um, on paper and, and I think we showed on the racetrack it was it was perfect as well. It's the first car I've driven in a long time that you get in it and it just does what you want and if it doesn't quite do what you want you can you can alter your driving and it'll react and you can alter the setup and it'll do what it should do. I mean my car was literally built, finished at three o'clock in the morning the day before media day and um, the guys transported it to the track and had an hour's sleep in the truck and, um, and got me out running and it just ran faultlessly. And, you know, they did a, such a great job and, and full credit, everything that all three of us have achieved this year has been down to the team and the boys who, who built those cars and BMW themselves for helping us. So when you talk about the car being built at three in the morning and, you know, uh, things being a bit late, there's three cars to build. It's not really that late. You probably didn't think you were gonna get in a car, but when it operates well and it works well, do you just think it's game on here, we're good? Yeah, I mean, like I, I was going into the first round firmly anticipating I was going to be racing a one series. Um, you know, they'd had two cars built and the third one was a little bit delayed and through no fault of their own, it was just parts and timelines and, and how it was working. And the boys were putting in 24 hour shifts, so there was nothing more they could do. So when we sat down for qualifying for race one and um, it was mixed conditions, first time I'd ever touched it in the wet. Um, and after the first run, we were on pole. and. Um, we sat there for about 20, 28 of the 30 minutes and, uh, and then Ash Sutton with his lovely Subaru beat us and, um, and my teammates just pipped me and you know what, from that moment on I thought, you know what, I can really, really do something with this car. Motorsport is known as a big team sport, full of individuals, the drivers being one of them, yeah. looking after themselves sometimes. You've spoken about your teammates, how good they are. They needed help. You had your own championship battle, but at Silverstone in particular, you know, you were called upon to, to help out and talk, talk us through it. I've always done pretty well at Silverstone. There's only four corners on the track, but every one, single one matters. And it, it, I don't know, it just seems to suit me. So all the way through testing, I was dead happy with the car. Yeah, I really, really liked it. I think pace-wise, it was sort of me and Jason Plato were sort of leading the pack. And I knew if I just, if I got the lap right with the toe, um, then you know I could be on pole but when you get to that situation of the championship you know both of my teammates were in the title fight and you know we had a discussion at the start of the year and everybody makes it very clear you know you're a team at the end of the day and, and BMW have to win the constructors and you know one of us needs to win the drivers and, and I was I was out of the drivers championship so I was very happy to help um, you know how it went down is, you know, Colin got first, he was leading the championship, so he got first refusal on who he wanted to tow round and he picked me. Um, so that meant AJ was working with um, uh, Stephen Jelly, I think, in the other BMW. So we'd worked on it, I knew my procedure, um, and obviously he got the preferential treatment in terms of going first in the tow. So I towed him round um, and it was difficult. He was on maximum ballast, I was on zero ballast and um, you know, that makes quite a big difference. And uh, I was going down a straight, having to be half throttle. I was, I was constantly looking in my mirrors, sort of making sure he was still in the toe um, and getting the maximum out of it. And uh, yeah, I think on my first run, I got one lap behind Colin and he got three or four and I was on provisional pole and um, it was a real scruffy lap for me. And I knew I had another couple attempts in it and I knew I needed another couple attempts to be on pole because um, I wasn't going to stay there. And um, the radio call came over, Colin was in P14 and, you know, he'd, he'd struggled to get the car to go with maximum ballast on and 
the decision was made that um, I, I was basically going to be towing him around again and, and Colin would get the, the first run of the tyres again. And yeah, we, we, we did five or six laps. Um, I mean, I got over the radio, he said, right, you know, he's P6, that's good. I'd drop down to P5 at this point. Um, there was like a minute left to go. So they sort of said, you're on your own. So it was frustrating because, you know, I knew I had the pace for pole and, and it would have been my first touring car pole. And I think it would have ended up with potentially my first race win as well. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of a hard pill to swallow, but good thing for me is, you know, I came straight out of a car and, and I was a little bit dejected. Um, but, you know, Louise and Colin were the first ones over to me, thanking me for, for what I've done for Colin. And Dick Bennett's was the second over to me and, and everybody sort of, you know, thanked me for what I've done. And, um, you know, I think it showed, you know, he won the championship in the end. And um, I like to think that, you know, starting P6 with maximum ballast around Silverstone is, is something that helped him along that journey. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd do it again, but... Hopefully next year I'll be in a position to ask him for a favour. <laughs> so one year under your belt at WSR, 2020 here already, not far away from the beginning of the year. Um, you know, what does it mean to have a, a second year consistently with a with a with a top team? Being back with WSR is you know really important to me. Um, I've always, throughout every championship, I've always had consistency. I've always stayed with the teams that I've run with and built upon it and, you know, worked with them to improve. And, um, yeah, it was always my intention to do two years with WSR. I'm not going anywhere. So, um, yeah, it, it meant a lot. You know, I've got the same engineers working on my car. I've got um, a different number one, but the same number two. Yeah, just really, really happy. Same consistency, same everything. Um, and I feel like I can really build on that and, and start the season how I left it at the last round. Wicked. I'm sure you'll do the business, mate. Thank you very much. Good luck.